Hey there, this is Jess from Make A Do Crew and I've partnered with Lion Brand to teach you how to seamlessly create extensions to your corner to corner crochet rectangles or squares so that you can create a lot of different shapes. And this is especially useful if you're not a big fan of seaming because it's integrated right alongside the tiles that you already worked. So this is the same technique that's used in my free range kimono pattern, which is a free crochet pattern on makeanddocrew.com. And that pattern is just a series of corner to corner rectangles that are connected together. And then there's this little trickery done <laughs> with adding the sleeves so that you don't have to seam them, but you have a really uh, natural and comfortable looking cardigan made from a few simple rectangles. And today we're gonna to be using a yarn from Lion Brand that I really love. It's called ZZ Twist, and it's super, super soft and drapey and 100% acrylic. Now the first thing to think about when you're adding an extension like this is how a corner to corner tile naturally works. And in the diagonal box stitch, you're seeing in your rows a horizontal tile and then a vertical tile and then a horizontal tile and a vertical tile. And they alternate like that. If you go down the columns here, we've got vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And I'm calling these horizontal and vertical because I'm just looking at the direction that the double crochet stitches are going. So this right here is a horizontal tile because the double crochet, the top of them is here and the bottom is here. This is a vertical tile because the bottom of them is here and the top is here. So if you look closely, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I found a vertical tile that's closest to where I want to get started. And that's important because our first tile we're going to add on here is going to be horizontal. So to follow the pattern of horizontal, sorry, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, we need to start with a vertical tile. So I'm going to start on the same side of the tile as the hand I'm crocheting with. So we're going to work this direction first. So I am going to attach my yarn on that side of the vertical tile. And I personally like to attach my yarn with a slip knot. So I've just got a slip knot here on my hook and I'm going to pull it through that space between the two tiles and then slip stitch and tighten it down. So you can see here, I have my new yarn. I'm just working in a different color um, so you can see what I'm doing. But of course you could use the same original color that you have for your first rectangle. But I'm here now on the same side of the vertical uh, tile as my dominant hand. And from here, we are going to start just like we would start a normal corner to corner tile uh, using double crochet. So that is with a chain six We've got six there, and then we are going to work into the fourth chain from the hook with a double crochet. Okay, so we've got our first double crochet there, and then we need to do two more. Okay, so I've got my first tile here and it's just hanging free, but now I need to attach it and I'm going to do that right between the next space between the tiles. So you can see here that that is between the vertical tile and the horizontal tile. So in order to anchor that down, I am just going to work a slip stitch. I'm inserting my hook in that space, yarning over and then pulling it through and tightening it down. And now we have one horizontal tile that is built right on top of the vertical tile where we started. And our next row is gonna work two tiles, one right here and one right here, just like a normal corner to corner rectangle would continue. So to begin row two, we need to anchor it down right over here in the space between the next two tiles. So to get over there, I'm going to chain three this is very similar to how you would start a new row of corner to corner. We're just going to do a little slip stitch in between. So I've got three chains there. I'm going to insert my hook in that space between the next two tiles and yarn over and pull through with the slip stitch. So now we've effectively moved our working yarn over here and now we can build our tiles right on top of that. So after I chain those three, I can 
chain three here or I can turn it and chain three. Either way, you can think of this like the first six chains that you would normally do at the beginning of a corner to corner row. Okay, so it's just like we started here with six chain chains. Here are our six chains. We just did a slip stitch in the middle. So we've got that little L shape and I'm going to turn my work now because we're going to begin on row two. And from here, this is pretty familiar because this is the chain three you would normally work into for your first tile of a corner to corner row. So I'm just going to work right underneath it here to keep it simple with a double crochet and then two more double crochets. Okay, so there is our second tile and the first tile of that row. And as you can see, it's a vertical tile here because um, it's the first tile of this row and it's right on top of a horizontal tile. So we can kind of check our work, make sure everything's looking good like that. We've got our first tile, so I'm going to slip stitch it into the chain three space of this uh, tile from row one just like we normally would with corner to corner. I've slip stitched that there, and then we can complete this row just like we typically would. So I'm gonna chain three, and then I'm going to double crochet three in that chain three space. One, two, and three. Okay, so you can see it's starting to look a little bit like a corner to corner rectangle here. And to begin row three, we can do it just like we typically would with corner to corner because nothing is different about the top of this. This is just like a typical rectangle. The only uh, different thing we're doing is down here at this edge. So I'm gonna start by chaining six. So we've got six there. And now I can turn my work and I'm gonna work back this is going to be row three now, and to do row three, I'm going to skip the first three chains, and then I will double crochet into the next three chains. Okay, so we've got our first tile here, and I'm going to slip stitch it under that chain three of the next tile, just like you normally would, and then I'm going to work a second tile here by chaining three and then doing three double crochets in that chain three space. Okay, I've got that second tile completed and so I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain three space. So to do our last tile, we're gonna chain three and then work into this chain three space right here just like normal. So we've got that third tile complete now, and as we have done before, we're gonna skip this tile and work into the next space between the tiles. So I'm gonna insert my hook there. I'm going from the top to the bottom, grabbing my yarn, yarning over, and then pulling through to make that slip stitch. So you can see here, we've got yet another tile that's connected at the bottom and hanging free up here at the top. So let's do one more row in the other direction just to make sure we have the hang of it. So heading this direction, we start with that chain three. And once we have chain three, that allows us to leap over here to the next space between the two tiles, which is right here. So I'm gonna skip that tile, insert my hook and slip stitch in between. So now I've effectively moved my yarn over. So then you can either turn your work or chain three and then turn your work, however you like to do it. I like to chain three first. So now we've got that three chains and then a slip stitch into the next space between the tiles and then three more chains. So I'm gonna turn now and then we're gonna work back in the other direction with three double crochets right underneath these three chains. So I've got that first tile completed there and then I'm going to slip stitch to join it here. And then from there, we can work a normal uh, corner to corner row where we stop up here at the top. And this row, as long as you continue increasing, should have four tiles in it. 
And now you can see that once we've worked several rows, we're starting to just get a second piece of corner to corner here on top of the first one. And for this, we can just continue working until we have the height in the second piece that we desire. So I have five tiles here. Say I wanted to make it seven tiles high. I would continue working back and forth for two more rows. So it would be seven tiles high. And then I would start decreasing up here, just like if I was working a normal corner to corner rectangle. And then I could make a flat edge here and continue working back and forth that way, coming between the top edge of my first rectangle and then this uh, decrease edge of the second rectangle and work as often or as many rows as I needed to to complete the new piece. So in the corner to corner kimono, that's what you're doing. You're going to stop after a little bit and then work all the way around so that what you end up with is this extra addition um, that you can seam together to make a sleeve. So I hope this tutorial inspires some new ideas for you. If you found it useful, I would love it if you subscribed to my free weekly newsletter where I send out free crochet patterns and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting!